Hey there, I'm Cyberchroma, and welcome to part 12 of Making an Abstract Adventure! Welcome back! This time, our characters can now swim, so let's take a look at that. So, uh, starting off here, we now have, uh, actually going to scene mode for a second, I built more environment going off to the right here, uh, where we now have this body of water and some, I guess, rocks or something, it's kind of a placeholder thing, just to see how this might look with these being foreground images, but anyway, so going oh, back to our game here, so when we jump into this body of water, we can now swim around. So that's all working properly, and yeah. Uh, and we can also press the space bar, and now instead of a jump, it's like a, a boost in whichever direction we are moving in, and all that. Now for the most part, our abilities also still work, kind of. Um, some of them are gonna need a bit more work to, to work properly underwater, but that's more stuff to be sorted out uh, later on. So now as well, our cute character can also swim around, and his abilities still also work. Um, I'm just noticing now that, that crouching is a little iffy. Alright, that's yeah, yeah, stuff to be uh, ironed out later on. And I'm not... wonder... Eh, wall jumping's... Oh well, okay, anyway. So, yeah, that's how this is looking at the moment. And as well, then we can kind of easily, like, jump out sort of, more or less. But, yeah, so that's what we've got going on here. So let's take a look at how swimming's being done. And it turned out to be a lot more of a doozy than I was anticipating. Um, so script-wise, we have two new scripts on our both of our players, one called Player Swim and one called Player Swim Boost. So um, let's take a look at... Actually, no, before we take a look at that, the actual water object here is just another... a, um, a white square that's blue and mostly transparent. So that we can see the players behind it um, and then it's on a has a water tag and at the moment it has the, the environment layer I might put it on like a different making it its own layer I'm not sure we'll for, figure that out that stuff out later with how um, trying to get the other abilities to work properly underwater uh, then it has a box collider set to is trigger and yeah that covers the whole <laughs> all of the the water here at the moment it's just kind of sort of in our environment stuff here um eventually i might make a separate like child or a parent object for all water objects or something like that we'll figure that out when we make more like interactable stuff but anyways over to our code a lot of stuff has been done so starting off um with player swim we have this public vote public float called speed and then two hidden inspector public variables one for a boolean of whether or not we are currently swimming and then a vector two called swim deer swim direction um which as you'll see sort of operates similar to the move direction in our move script um yeah then we have a bunch of private variables one for um okay so first of all this the actual aiming of which direction we're swimming in kind of works similar to the player lineup script way of um of aiming so you'll notice some similarities here so this input received boolean will operate the same as the input received boolean on the um the lunge or the um player lineup script as you, as we'll see so then uh two also private variables called direction x direction y uh we'll look into how what those are used for down here but they are similar to the rotation um float as with our player lineup script then getting a bunch of references to the rigid body the player move script the player jump script and the player double jump script um yeah so then in awake we're getting references to all of these and then now down here having this big uh swim function as well as to um on trigger functions down here i'm going to actually just cover these first and we'll get to the swim function in a second. So, first of all, having a uh, on collision or on trigger stay function, and then testing whether or not we are currently swimming. Um, so, if we aren't currently swimming and we're in the collider of something uh, tagged water, then swimming equals true. Like we're saying, so that yes, we are swimming now. Uh, and then disabling some things on the player move script and the player jump script so that things aren't breaking uh as we'll see we'll i'm gonna look at um sort of some stuff that we did to the uh the main scripts in a second for how this stuff is being handled uh and then on trigger exit does the exact opposite where if we are swimming and we just left the collider or something tagged water then 
we're sort of re-enabling a bunch of stuff so that we go back to the how we were moving before. Um, as well, kind of a special case of setting can double jump that boolean fire player double jump script to true so that right when we exit water it counts as us being in the air to be able to do a double jump just so that that kind of works better with getting out of out of water um and yeah so that's how that is done now over in our uh square main and circle main scripts kind of the same change has been done to both where now we have uh, where is it? Over here. Uh, two private references to the player swim and player swim boost scripts. The swim boost we'll look at momentarily, but then we're getting the references in awake. And then down here, what we're doing is, um, so over in our update function here, where we had all of the different, uh, kind of update equivalent functions running in these scripts in different orders, but all kind of being dealt with in one place. We're now having an if statement in here of if we uh, getting re getting our reference to the player swim script if swimming is set to true so if we are swimming then we're running in this case over here the uh the swim boost uh function and otherwise then we're running the double jump and the jump function so basically if we are swimming then these aren't even running at all uh and then down in fixed update kind of the same thing we had um this area here where we were running our move script in fixed update because of the way that physics was uh operating with that in fact actually looking at some things some of these should probably also be running in fixed update but that's something that we'll i'll sort out later but um yeah so then we're testing if we are swimming here and then we're running the swim move script and if we're not swimming then we're running the normal move script so yeah and then square main it's sort of basically the same sort of thing except also wall jumping is disabled as well so yeah um then over on our player swim script now this is where this function is getting called in place of the player move script um so first of all we're sort of setting the velocity or multiplying it by 0.9 kind of like just uh, having our own drag so sort of in place uh, accompanied with our uh, add force stuff that we're doing down here but then um so how we're actually getting input for which direction we should be moving in is done in pretty much the same way that the uh rotation calculating the rotation was done over in the player lineup script down here um except just a bit a bit different because we're getting x and y directions and then turning that into a vector as opposed to a float for a rotation so anyways so if we're pressing either w or s in both cases we're setting uh, input received to true and we do the same for d and a down here but then um if we hit w we're setting the y direction to one if we hit s then we're setting it to negative one otherwise we're setting it to zero and then for the x direction if we hit d setting it to one if we hit a setting it to negative one otherwise setting it to zero so same thing then uh after we've done all that getting input then we're testing if any input was received so if there's any yeah input that has been pressed then um we're setting the gravity scale to zero then setting the swim direction to um getting the a new vector three that is the direction x and the direction y for the x and y components and then normalizing it so it has a magnitude of one so if we're only holding w and moving up that's still going to be one zero uh but if we were holding w and d then it's like going along a diagonal but still having it be a magnitude of one so that we're not moving faster if we're moving diagonally relative to up and down just making that consistent there um and then using rigid body add force in a similar way to what we did in the move script or having this swim direction multiplying by speed times 10 times time dot delta time which probably doesn't need to be there as well but oh well um and then using force mode 2d dot impulse so it's a bit more of a impulse force <laughs> yeah now and then otherwise if we haven't uh, received any input then uh we're gonna be setting the gravity scale to 0 0.5 so we're just kind of slowly falling just because gravity underwater being less uh but as opposed to just staying in place just a design choice there but uh if we are moving then we're setting the gravity scale to zero so we're not so that we're still like sort of moving consistently when we're actually moving in water and yeah um and then down here we've already covered so that is basically how all the movement is being dealt with so yeah we're sort of disabling a lot of the the land sort of scripts with like the moving the jumping and the double jumping and then enabling 
these sort of move or these like swim functions instead so that's sort of how the the transition is being dealt with when we get into like animating and all that sort of stuff then there might be need to be more stuff put in place for this but for now this should work just fine um and now on to the player swim boost which has a uh public function here that's also being called by our square main and circle main scripts as we saw so first of all up here we have a public two floats for boost force and boost delay um the boost force will act sort of similar to jumping in that it's just the the force that's being applied to uh to launch us in a direction for jumping it's up in this case it's any whatever direction that we're moving in and then a boost delay that's a delay for um like resetting when we can boost again which is about like half a second i believe um and then having this uh actually yeah hold on i don't this isn't necessary um yeah so like yeah that was a, a hidden inspector public variable for whether or not we're swimming but this has been changed that we're just um in our square main if the swimming boolean on player move or on the player swim is set to true then we're just also running the swim boost as well because they should be sort of going hand in hand with each other so that's that's that uh so then we have some private variables here one for whether or not we can currently boost that's kind of coincides with the boost delay and then a reference to the rigid body and the player swim script so um actually i don't believe i need the player swim script either yeah there's a lot of just uh messing around trying to get this to to work the way uh i didn't want it to oh wait no hold on um no sir yes i do need it never mind yep okay so uh then in awake we're setting can boost to true because just right off the bat we can boost if we're in water um and the only way for it to get reset anyways is by by the act of boosting it being set to false and then waiting a second then it being set to true but then um getting reference to the player swim here and yeah then on to the actual function where we're boosting so if can boost is set to true and we've hit the space key then we are um using virtual body to add force in the same way as before just applying this large force in the direction of the swim direction from the player swim script and that's also a uh, force mode 2d dot impulse except because this is such a large force being applied once as opposed to the other case where it's being applied every frame this will be a lot more of like an explosion force kind of as you saw so then we're starting this code routine down here called wait to boost which allows us to have a delay until we can uh boost again so we're just setting this boolean to false waiting about half a second and then setting it to true again so that is basically how all the movement stuff is being dealt with um i don't believe much has changed in these scripts uh there was a lot of messing around this took this was ended up being a lot harder than i thought it'd be to get this to work i could have just made it so that if you're underwater there's just like less gravity and you kind of fall slower but i kind of wanted to make swimming being like a sort of different move set just because design choices um yeah i think oh one thing i did add over in the circle lunge slash script is i uh brought back the lunge delay so that even if you're lunging lunging on the the ground there's still like i like got still a small delay of when you can uh lunge again so and then coinciding with that there's a private boolean called can lunge and it's used in the exact same way as before so when we lunge uh or before we lunge there's this can lunge uh variable here of whether or not we can aim using the the arrow aiming thing and then when we lunge uh there's this wait to lunge function where at the beginning we set the can lunge to false and then at the end of it there's this lunge delay and then setting can lunge to true the rest of the stuff we've already looked at before so that is basically then how all of this is working with disabling um so over in our player swim also disabling the like actually disabling these scripts for the player move and player jump that's stopping these update functions in the scripts from running so we're not having this separate drag or this um like, yeah other ways of slowing down the player because we're dealing with that on our own in the player swim script and same thing with player jump we're not having this fall 
uh, scripts running because we don't need them to be running because we're dealing with it in the player swim script in a different way because it's kind of a different moveset. But anyways, so that is all how that is being done. Next, I kind of, some more work needs to be done with making more of the abilities actually work properly underwater. I do want them to work underwater as best as possible. I don't know how much underwater sections we're going to necessarily have in the game. I do kind of want there to be one level that is mostly underwater just to have have that be a thing but in terms of going from air like land to underwater i don't know how frequently that will be happening in the game but yeah we'll see we could also have potentially different liquids i guess that you could be swimming in that where uh things are different like i don't know maybe you can swim in la lava but you just take damage or something um or like freezing water something like that or maybe something that's like sticky where you move slower or something that's foggy that kind of obstructs your vision i don't know there's different ideas that we can take this in there could also be maybe a section where you're like somehow if you're like in space or something and then having the same sort of swim script be running but you're just kind of moving around in space or something i don't know those are just potential throwing potential ideas out there as we're just planning more of potential levels for this game but anyways that'll be it for this episode then uh thank you all so much for watching and as always i'll see you around